Bill Higuchi spent his young life in Northern California, but things took a challenging turn following the United States entrance into World War II. Yeah, when my father was uh, an early teen, uh, 13 or 14, his family was forced to relocate to Heart Mount, Wyoming from uh, the San Jose, California area. That was very common uh, for Japanese Americans. And uh, I think there are a lot of members of uh, that community that are still alive and they still feel the, the heartache. And I think my, my, my father is still well and my parents uh, were greatly affected by it. Life in the internment camp was difficult, both physically and emotionally for him and his family. But in a way, it steeled his resolve to rise above it and prove his value to the world. Undergraduate graduate and a PhD in physical chemistry began his long career in academics. Maybe that might have been an impetus that they really had to work very hard as being viewed as immigrants and being not quite American that they felt they needed to uh, go the extra step in terms of excelling at education, uh, excelling in their work. After 20 years at the University of Michigan, Bill was lured to the University of Utah in 1983. He found an open and collaborative atmosphere and an entrepreneurial spirit. I think what made Utah unique was, was the entrepreneurial spin. You know, one of his specializations, uh, he had a, one of the longest running NIH projects. Was, I think he, he came to the university with a project that was like, continuing a grant for 30 years, and I think he ended up you know, like a 44-year grant relationship with the NIH. And so he was very proud of that, and it related to um, the bone and teeth mineralization work. Dr. Higuchi cared deeply about his students. He was adamant that he prepared them well for the challenges of their field and ensured they had the intellectual tools to succeed. He loves his students. He thinks, you know, he thinks they, he doesn't let them go out of their PhD program unless, yeah, you know, they understand the, the hard rigors of, uh, you know, pharmaceutical chemistry. So Dr. Higuchi, as an educator, um, I mean, he was one of the few scientists and experts in uh, applying physical chemistry in pharmaceutical and biological problems. And that's a very hard field. I mean, I still have his notes till now, and I'm probably those are the only notes that I have from my PhD years. I am the second generation with Dr. Higuchi, so my dad was also his graduate student in University of Michigan. He joined 1968, I joined 2003. So, you know, I was always heard lots of stories about Dr. Higuchi in University of Michigan and, and my dad always attributes his success to, to him. While his students, the rigors of the lab and scientific breakthroughs were important to him, people and family were more important. People are very important to him. So I, I would say that's that probably has had a strong impact on me. So I think there's more to life than, you know, working right now in a lab all the time. But uh, it was very important to him and it sort of defines who he is. But I, I also respect the, the man too. He's, he's just a good guy. And all of our family members uh, adore him. Bill's research focused on optimizing drug transport and getting medicine efficiently to target sites in the body. He also pioneered tooth and bone preservation models. His influence on pharmaceutics and pharmaceutical chemistry have been enormous, and his legacy continues. Besides his research, besides his you know, peer-reviewed publications, besides, you know, he was a founder and co-founder of, I think, four pharmaceutical companies, but look at his students. I mean, most of them, you know, acquainted great positions in academia and pharmaceutical industries in the U.S. and globally. To give you some idea of the impact of Bill's research and role as a professor, this is not his first honorary degree. The University of Michigan honored him in 2013. The University of Utah is proud to add a second to his list of accomplishments.